Many decades ago, I think when I was like 19, that would be 30 years ago, I read, I can't remember her name, she was a, an expert in terrorism, and she was writing about the Middle Eastern conflicts, you know, the Palestinians and with Israel and all that stuff. And she said a line, or she wrote a line, that I have remembered over these past 30 years. It's, it's a brilliant line. It's so simple and so profound. It's, the more you understand, the less you forgive. <laughs> I, 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 um, to be quite frank, just saying that sentence is enough. The rest of this commentary is superfluous. But for those of you who are interested in it, let me explain. You see, as you get older and you understand more, uh, you understand the motivations of people. You understand why they did what they did. And as you examine those motivations, many times, often, you will discover that you cannot forgive them. See, somebody commits some horrible crime, right? And, and, and they say at first, well, I had to do it. But then you start examining it a little further. And they say, well, I had to do it. Well, because, you know, the voices told me. And, and you examine it a little further and you think, well, he's insane. And then you examine it further and you realize that, you know, he's been reading up on insanity and, and pleas for, you know, getting off lightly in case of murder. And it turns out that there's, there's an insurance policy and money. And then you understand. And you can forgive even less. I mean, I'm just giving a hypothetical example, of course. But there are a lot of cases where the more you understand the motivations and the reasons why people are doing what they're doing, the less you can forgive them. And never be afraid of judgment. Our society constantly says that, you know, you should don't judge, you know, non-judgment, you know, not that there's anything wrong with that, which is just bullshit, see? Bullshit. You must judge. It's your responsibility. You must make moral judgments, see? Because imagine if that nobody made any kind of moral judgments whatsoever, and everybody was, was allowed to run riot. We'd have the state of nature. We wouldn't have any kind of society, any kind of civilized society. We'd be clubbing each other to death over food. That's what we would have if we did not have moral judgment. You have to judge. And sometimes, and that's the problem, sometimes, see, moral judgment is hard. It's hard to make a moral judgment. It hurts. But you have to stop and look at a situation and examine it and understand what is going on. And sometimes, with that understanding, you understand and you cannot forgive. You cannot forgive some of the things that people have done. You cannot forgive it. Maybe you could explain it and, and understand why they did it, but you can't forgive. See? One of the things I've discovered as I've gotten older is that um, I'm 49 now, and when my parents were 49, I was 25. And it's, it's a really interesting experience. You see, when I, was, um, when I was born, my parents were 25, 25 and 22. And so, when I was 10, I very clearly recall things that my parents did. And they were 35 and 32, respectively. And then when I was 35, when I was 32, I look back on that period of my life, look back on when I was 10, look back on what my parents had done. And as I got older, I found it harder and harder to forgive them because I began to understand the pressures that they were under and the reasons that they had done what they had done. And I realized that some of those reasons were just no. And of course, it pains me to make these judgments. It's not an easy thing. But we all pass judgment on our parents, on the people who influence our lives. A few uh, days ago, I did a post on Alexander Solzhenitsyn, uh, the great Russian author. When I was young, I found him just too austere, too judgmental, this uh, big man on a mountaintop kind of thing. I admired his work, and they had a tremendous impact on me. 
Oddly enough, it was an impact that at the time I realized and recognized, but it was only years later that the reverberations of that influence would really hit me, like the aftershock of an earthquake that happened long ago. And as I've grown older, I've admired Solzhenitsyn more and more. In fact, every year that passes him, I admire him more. And when I was young, my great literary hero was James Joyce. I'm going to do a post about him in a few days. When I was young, I thought that James Joyce was just, you know, a genius, a god. And yet, oddly, as I've grown older, as I know more, as I understand more, I find him more and more lacking. Today, when I think of James Joyce, I think of a small little man, nobody to respect. In point of fact, I would venture to say that I've come to despise James Joyce. I despise him as an artist and I despise him as a man, most especially as a man. See? Because those moral judgments, we can't elude them. Mm -hmm. And if we're honest with ourselves, if only with ourselves, if only in the dark of the night, we know, we know the truth. And we don't like it. Because a lot of times we feel tremendous love for the people that we are judging. In my own case, with my parents, for instance. Of course I love them. I love them greatly. What kind of person would I be if I did not love my parents? I love them very much. And yet I cannot avoid making the judgments on them that I have made. Because they're true, you see? Because that's the thing. Like I've said, only the guilty fear judgment. Only those who are wrong fear the truth. See? You should always pay attention to what's true and judge things based on the truth. It's not a truth, it is the truth. Because you'll find that you cannot afford the luxury of relativism in the moral sense or the epistemic sense. That which is true and good and real and that which is untrue, unjust, unreal. You have to make those judgments. If you do not, the world will destroy you. And it will. You have to make those moral judgments. And our society tries to inculcate the idea that moral judgments are anathema. That we should not. We should be permissive and allow people to do whatsoever they will. But that is wrong. That is completely wrong. We cannot have a functioning society where there is no moral judgment. We are already seeing a society that lacks epistemic judgment. The, the, the being able to differentiate between that which is true and that which is false, between that which are subjective feelings and that which is objective fact. That blurring of the line separating the two has caused havoc. Our political discourse, our civil society, it's falling apart. We cannot allow moral relativism into our society. We have done so, but they've established a beachhead. They haven't conquered the whole land. We can't allow it. You can't allow it. You have to make moral judgments. And it is a difficult thing and an unpleasant thing. And I recognize that. But you cannot afford the luxury of being, of being blind to that which is good and that which is evil.